So today we'll discuss bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. So to understand bulbar palsy, we have to have we need to have little bit knowledge about cortico bulbar tract. So this cortico bulbar tract, we know it's uh, comes with a cortico spinal tract, and it basically this tract is responsible for the supplying nerve to, uh, to the supplying impulse to the face and head and neck. So that's why this starts from the face. So this is the face in the motor homunculus. So the cortico is bulbar tract it comes from this is the landmark between the lentiform nucleus and the caudate nucleus and then the thalamus so this is part is the internal capsule so I can make like this so this part is the internal capsule this blue part is the internal capsule and it comes to the midbrain pons and medulla and this cortico bulbar tract as you know it comes and it's the dual supply it supplies bilaterally so in the midbrain, third and fourth nucleus, then pons 5, 6, 7, and in the medulla, 9, 10, 11, 12. So when we discuss bulbar and pseudobulbar palsy, we are basically concerned with 9, 10, 11, 12. Alright? So this is the upper motor neuron. So, so when this coming, it is supplying 9, 10, 11, 12. It is a dual supply, right? There is some change in the 12th nerve because 12th nerve is contralateral. The lower nucleus of the 12th nerve it supplies uh, the genioglossus. So till now we'll just keep it like this. All right? So 9, 10, 11, 12. And what they do? So this is the upper motor neuron. And from here, from the 9, 10, 11 neuron, this is the lower motor neuron which starts. Lower motor neuron which starts. So where is this? It is medulla. So we know that this is a cortico bulbar tract that is the upper motor neuron. So bulb, where is this bulb? Bulb is present in the medulla. And from the medulla, here the lower motor neuron starts from the 9, 10, 11, 12. Remember what they do, what they supply, 9, 10, 11. Remember this, L, P, S, T, L, P, S, T. You can make your own acronym. Like L for larynx, P for pharynx. S for soft palate and T for tongue. Okay, so 9, 10, 11, 12, this control this group of muscles larynx, pharynx, soft palate, and tongue. Okay, so we know the functions of larynx and pharynx, soft palate, and tongue. Right, if you see here, so what does 9, 10, 11, 12 do? 9, 10, 10, 11, the 9, 10, 11, 12, they supply. L P S T. Remember that alphabets. L P L for larynx, P for pharynx, S for soft palate, and T for tongue. So now, when there is a problem in this 9, 10, 11, 12, when they are disconnected, when they are disconnected, we can say lower motor neuron paralysis. Okay. So bulbar palsy is a lower motor neuron palsy, lower motor neuron paralysis of 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So there is a, this is a lower motor neuron. So it is a lower motor neuron disease. So bulbar pal palsy involves 9, 10, 11, 12 when there is a lower motor neuron paralysis. So what will be the cause that can affect here? So it can be because of any inflammation here. Poliomyelitis, which is one of the earliest cause. Now it's Guillain-Barre syndrome. Then toxins, scorpion bites, snake venoms. They most when they involve 9, 10, 11, 12, then there is a problem here in the larynx, pharynx, soft palate, and tongue. So what will happen here in the bulbar palsy? What are the clinical features here? So remember, in bulbar palsy, they will have these problems. Means difficulty in swallowing. So is it there with difficulty in swallowing? Not exactly so much of difficulty in swallowing. Because if it, uh, but there will be problem in the, yes, pharynx, voice will be there, soft palate, movement of tongue. So what the basic problems will be here, if you see in the bulbar palsy, there will be nasal regurgitation. There will be nasal regurgitation. Okay, there will be nasal regurgitation. 
drooling of saliva drooling of saliva okay and there will be aspiration of the liquid liquid will be aspirated and what will be the signs here what will we find in bulbar palsy what will be the signs you'll find that in bulbar palsy there will be fasciculations fasciculations are the small twitch of twitch seen in the muscle so you'll see in the fasciculations and what will you see in the jaw jerk jaw jerk it is a lower motor neuron paralysis remember jaw jerk will be increased they will be absent or reduced gag reflex remember they are controlled by 9 10 11 12 okay all these are functions so gag reflex will be absent or decreased and what else you'll get then also you'll get here yeah, gag reflex, uh, jaw jerk is decreased and fasciculations will be there and atrophy of the tongue that is an important sign here atrophy of tongue atrophy of the tongue remember the tongue the all the muscles of the tongue are supplied by 12 nerve hypoglossal nerve except palatoglossus which is supplied by vagus nerve so in this hypoglossal nerve it supplies all the muscles of the tongue and contralaterally it supplies the genioglossus which is the important muscle of the tongue that is needed for protruding in and out so in the tongue if this part of the genioglossus will be affected all right so and as a result there will be atrophy of the tongue and difficulty in protruding of the tongue so there will be difficulty in speech also articulation is will be in a problem and there will be drooling of saliva that's why so it is involved with 9 10 11 12 so this is a bulbar palsy okay this is called bulbar palsy bulbar palsy is palsy is involvement of lower motor neuron paralysis and remember the signs you'll get fasciculations reduced jaw jerk gag reflex is reduced atrophy of the tongue will be present so this is the about bulbar palsy now let's move to pseudo bulbar palsy now zero bulbar palsy it is a upper motor neuron it is a upper motor neuron paralysis it is a upper motor neuron type and it mostly involves bilateral so upper motor neuron so means from the this is it is involving cortico bulbar tract so upper motor neuron this part is the upper motor neuron right so this part is the upper motor neuron so this part is the upper motor neuron so this is the Cortico bulbar tract is involved here. So there may be some stroke here, or there may be any tumor here, or it can be because of uh, any head injury or any sort of injury or tumor is progressing. So there's multiple cause. And remember, pseudo bulbar palsy, there, most of the times it is bilateral. It is bilateral, it involves bilateral. So it involves, it can involve both sides of the cortico bulbar tract. In contrast to bulbar tract, bulbar palsy, where bulb, in bulbar palsy 9, 10, 11, 12 is involved. Here in pseudo bulbar palsy, 5 and 7 is also involved. So 5, cranial nerve number 5 and cranial 7. So along with these things, 5 is involved. Now 5 is trigeminal nerve involved with swallowing. So there will be a problem in the swallowing, chewing of the things. Because it uh, supplies the muscles for mastication. 7, we know facial nerve, one of the important nerve. And so facial paralysis will be combined with now bulbar palsy. Going and is becoming a big scenario of pseudo bulbar palsy. So now what happens in facial muscles that the facial muscle, the patient who is one who is having pseudo bulbar palsy, they are having inability to control the muscles of face. So what may happen? So as a result, there can be pathological laughing or crying. Right? So please mark it. Yes, it's called pathological. Pathological laughing. When somebody cannot control his laugh or crying, okay, pathological laugh or crying. 
you can imagine that situation when somebody is laughing out loud and he cannot control his laughing so obviously it will impact his daily life it will impact his personality it can in, impact his social circle when somebody is crying and crying could not control when somebody is laughing and could not control the limit of the love and he's laughing loud and loud and going on so what we call pathological laughing so that is the scenario here because he cannot control his the facial muscles. So facial nerve is involved here. Now number seven, facial nerve is involved. So in pseudo bulba palsy, there is the involvement of facial nerve. So along with that, what we are getting? We are getting plus facial paralysis. Okay, facial muscle paralysis is coming with pseudo bulbar paralysis. So common cause of pseudobulbar paralysis, yes, we know it can be stroke, it can be any injury here, progressive tumor here. But you remember this, it is mostly involving, most of the time it is bilateral degeneration, where the inhibition to the facial muscles is lost. So you can get these things, like 9, 10, 11, 12 will be also involved. Yes, but there is an extra involvement of 5 and 7. So pseudobulbar is an upper motor neuron. It is an upper motor neuron. So what will happen in upper motor neuron? There will be no atrophy. You will not get any atrophy of the tongue. This is an upper motor neuron. Tongue will not be atrophied. But the, what about this jug? So jaw jug will be increased. Gag reflex will be increased. These are the things you must think about when you discuss bulbar palsy and pseudo bulbar palsy. So pseudobulbar palsy, his fasciculations will not be there, jaw jerk will be increased, gag reflex will be increased, tongue will not be atrophied. Along with that, you can have drooling of saliva. So, and here because trigeminal nerve is also involved, so there will be difficulty in swallowing. And there will be difficulty in phonation, okay, articulation, voice, nasal speech is coming up. Sometimes they might have nasal speech, but most importantly, it is having a... In pseudobulbar palsy, there will be a social impact, okay, because of pathological laughing. So, what is happening here? There will be pathological laughing or crying. So, that is a very important part of this disease. So, in contrast, bulbar palsy, pseudobulbar palsy. So, in pseudobulbar palsy, 5, 7, plus 9, 10, 11, 12. What does 9, 10, 11, 12 do? It LPST. They supply larynx, P for pharynx, S for sock pellet, T for tongue. So, plus facial mars, nerve is involved and trigeminal nerve is involved. So, there is a difficulty in swallowing and difficulty in chewing, difficulty in facial control of the facial expressions. Plus, in pseudobulbar, most of the times it is both the corticobulbar tractor involved. Okay, it must maybe sometimes it is bilateral. So the causes are most of the times any sort of progressing tumor can lead to pseudobulbar palsy. Some there's some clot or stroke, it can lead to there some pseudobulbar palsy. Whereas in bulbar palsy, we are dealing with this side. So Guillain-Barre syndrome, myningitis, or some sometimes it is also outside the brain stem that something is involved here and it can also lead to bulbar palsy. So that is the basic difference between bulbar palsy and pseudobulbar palsy.